this and everything that was prayed over you this morning, you receive that. God is so impressed, so happy with the fact that you came in the house today. Yes, yes. Amen. Amen. And keep feeling like that. You know, keep that in your heart. Well, today, our lesson title is The Sun Greater Than the Angels. And when I looked at this title, I thought, who would even consider that the angels would be over God, <laughs> you know, would be over Jesus? And, and I was looking in the lesson text, and the author states, in some of the early churches, certain false teachers taught that God was to be approached through angels. Some even considered Jesus to be nothing more than the highest of angels. And that just remind me back in the Old Testament of those uh, leaders that were trying to, you know, shed skepticism among the people because they were threatened by him. And so even today, you know, people still really don't want to receive him as the son of God. So, okay, I'm going to I'm going to go forward and I listen, but I want to pray first. Father God, we just thank you. Hallelujah. Always for the prayer that has already gone forth, oh God. And Father, I ask that there be none of me, but all of you, Lord God, that this lesson will be executed to the glory of God. So Father, I just thank you right now that all things come back to my remembrance, Lord God, that I've studied and read. So Father, I just thank you because I know that it is done in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we are in Hebrews 1, 1 through 9. And I want to give Deacon a shout out. <laughs> He's with me here in spirit. And I thank Lady Montgomery for that prayer. You know, we, we hope to see him back really soon. All right. Hebrews 1, 1 states, God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spake in times past unto the fathers by the prophets. Well, let me define sundry times. Sundry times, I looked that up in the dictionary, it refers to the ages. It's, and it states that in past time, so they're talking about a past time in, in life. And in the text, the author states, Sundry times means that God spoke in many portions, giving his message in fragments. Each book of the Old Testament contains parts of God's total message. So when we look, when we look at um, when we look at the Word of God and we think about it in portions and fragments, it's speaking of the Old Testament. And in the Old Testament, God spoke to his people through prophets. And those prophets were Joshua, or excuse me, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Ezekiel, Isaiah, and Jeremiah. And if you remember, um, God told Moses, Moses was living in the land of Ur. He told Moses to go to a land that I will show you. Oh, I'm sorry, Abraham. Yes, <laughs> Abraham. And he told Abraham to go to a land that I will show you. Well, as I was thinking about that as well, it's kind of getting off the lesson a little bit, but that shows Abraham's um, obedience and that showed his faith. You know, God didn't say go to 1406 John Street. You know, he told him to go and Abraham went. So that showed his faith in that manner. And diverse manners, um, the lesson text states that it refers to the way God spoke through a variety of avenues such as people, vision, dreams, incident, and object lessons. Okay, verse 2. Hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, 
whom he have appointed heir. And who is he? Appointed their heir all things by whom also he made the worlds. So we're speaking of the son here. And it states here that first God had appointed his son as the heir of all things. So God appointed his son the heir of all things. He's the creator of all things, even those angels. Thou hast put all things in subjection under his feet, for in that he put all things in subjection under him. Hallelujah. God is the creator of all things. Verse 3. Who being the brightness of his glory and his expressed image of his person and upholding all things by the word of his power, when he had by himself purged our sins, sat down on the right hand of majesty on high. Now, who being the brightness of his glory, Jesus is the brightness of God's glory. Jesus is the only begotten son. He said, here is my son who I am well pleased with. Not once did, did God state, here are my angels who I am well pleased with. You know, and when Jesus died on the cross, he purged our sins. He made us available to be able to go to the Father. And when Jesus died on that cross, he ascended to the right hand of the Father. And when he ascended there, he rested because it was done. He had accomplished everything that the Father sent him here to do. Verse 4. Being made so much better than the angels as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. All right. When Jesus had purred our sins and sat down at the right hand of God, he became much better than the angels. Now, as I was reading this and Deacon and I were talking about this, my thought on this was when Jesus took on sin, it stated that there was a time that God could not even look on him. So at that time, maybe it was um, represented that he was lower. But when he became the righteousness of God, when he died on that cross, that made us available for salvation. The son has always been superior to angels, though, throughout eternity he's always been he's always been superior yes brother robert Yeah, yeah, it was a purpose, but he was always even in that even in that instance he was still superior to the angels. Yes. Yes. Okay, verse 5. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, thou art my son this day, I have begotten thee. 
And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me my son. Again, we're still talking about Jesus being the only begotten son of God. And I want to digress here a little bit. God, even as um, Pastor Johnson will say this all the time, that God's word is progressive. You know, as we study in our in our lessons, um, God's word is progressive. And when it speaks of times past, it's referring to the book of Genesis, which was in the beginning. Exodus was when the Israelites exited from Egypt. And then we have Numbers, we have Leviticus. So all those books are representative of something. Leviticus tells you how you should live, you know, in those things. So God's word is progressive. And, okay, I'm going to move on. Verse 6, and again... When he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, and let all angels of God worship him. So God is saying, here's my only begotten son. All creations will worship him, even the angels, even the angels. The word translated spirits can refer to a, a current of air a breath or wind this verse gives us insight into the nature and purpose of angels they are compared to natural elements of wind and fire both of which accomplish god's bidding and another um another definition for angels are messengers they are messengers, but God created them for a lot of different things, but they do God's bidding. I like verse 8 here, and I'm going kind of fast. <laughs> I like verse 8 here. It states, but unto the Son, he, who is he? God saith. Thy throne, O God. And he's talking about Jesus there. He's saying, but unto the Son, he, God, thy throne, O God, Jesus, is forever and ever a scepter of righteousness and is the scepter of thy kingdom. So God is telling Jesus, Go on, God. And Jesus is saying, go on, God. <laughs> God is stating that God is telling us right here that Jesus is God. He's recognizing him right here as God. And scepter means that he's giving him authority. He's giving him authority over all the kingdom. Verse 9, thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore, God, even thy God, have anointed thee with oil of gladness above thy fellows. So God anointed his son to have dominion of the earth. and that God is of righteousness. God is of righteousness. You know, a third of the angels were kicked out of heaven. Those angels were indeed, you know, you might as well say tainted. You know, they wouldn't have been um, purpose to take on our sins they probably would have said oh no i'm not gonna go through that 
So the only true living God is Jesus. Jesus went through all he went through, bore all that he did just for us, just for us. And whenever I think about that, I always feel, God, how awesome that was. Because I, I don't think that, I don't think that I could have did that. That That is just truly awesome to me. So Jesus is the creator of all things, all things. He is to be exalted. He is the glory of God, the glory of God, the glory of God. And in the lesson, it says that every nation, every nation should bow to the name of Jesus. And back in verse 2, it states that by whom also he made the worlds. It doesn't say world. It says worlds. So when I read worlds, I think about, you know, those planets, Mars, Jupiter, Venus, and in the heavens. He created all things. He created all things. So why would there even be a question of him, you know, being over the angels? Okay, Brother Robert. <laughs> Christians. Hello? We know that uh, there are a lot of religious people that believe that they put a limitation on Christ, mm -hmm. okay? And they don't look at him um, a as God, okay, as uh, the creator and all that, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, and my thing is this, you know, the reason why they don't believe because they don't believe in the word of God, okay? Mm -hmm. They put a limitation on it, you know, and mm -hmm. they let people know that what they believe to have people think that it's the truth about Jesus, okay? And um, like I said, you know, I'm not going to put a, a, a stamp on what religions believe in, in certain things and whatnot, mm -hmm. but all I know is what I believe, mm -hmm. okay, is the word of God, mm -hmm. okay? Because when I was growing up learning the word, I was always lied to. Okay, about the word of God, that everything in the Bible ain't true. Okay. Okay. So to become a true believer about God's word, mm -hmm. right? You gotta believe in all of God's word. Right. None of it. Don't right. don't, don't take this portion out and leave mm -hmm. this portion mm -hmm. out and believe in this and believe in that mm -hmm. and leave the rest mm -hmm. of it out. Mm -hmm. Uh-uh. If to be a true believer of God, you gotta believe everything that's in the word and everything that is said in the word about Jesus. Yeah. That it is true. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 And, you know, I was thinking about what you were saying, Brother Robert. When I was younger, I didn't grow up in the church. So I didn't grow up in the things of God. And I always heard God, but I never heard reference of Jesus. So it's when you when you know the word of God, you know, that's when your knowledge and everything starts increasing in the things of God. You know, the more you know, the more you get to know Jesus, the more he reveals himself to you, you know, the stronger your faith becomes, the stronger your faith becomes. So, um, did anyone else have any questions or conversation? <laughs> yeah, I know we do, Brother Robert. I was kind of moving fast. <laughs> I was kind of moving fast here. Okay. Well, ah, uh. <laughs> that's a good one. Well, how was when was he anointed by God, by the Father? Yeah, I was gonna say that, Pastor Johnson. My son. Who I am well pleased. 
hear Amen. him. Amen. And the Holy Spirit has descended upon him. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit is the anointer. He is the anointment that came. And if you notice, Jesus didn't have, he didn't operate in power or authority mm -hmm. until the until the Holy Spirit came upon him, in him. All that time he operated as a natural man. Mm -hmm. And from that day forth, his ministry begins yes. because the Holy Spirit leads him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Mm -hmm. So he's anointed now. He is anointed now. Okay. Okay. All right. When he fights the devil with the scripture, because you know we didn't have no New Testament, mm -hmm. but what he had was the scriptures are from the Old Testament. So he fought him with Deuteronomy, I believe somewhere about the sixth chapter, as he began to defeat him with the word of God. That's why I tell people, you know, sometimes they say, well, you got to have uh, the word over here in the new. Listen, Jesus defeated the devil with the Old Testament. The Old Testament. It was the word. It was the inspired mm -hmm. word of God. Mm -hmm. Man shall not live alone, but by every word that proceeded mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. of okay. the mouth of God. Mm -hmm. Amen. And, and Amen. so it was the, the, the word of God is the strongest, most powerful weapon it's a sword but it's also it's more powerful than an atomic bomb the thing about it is is that we have it but we don't use it yes yes because he's given us the power of life and death in our tongue mm -hmm. so it's what you speak Yes. And I like the fact that Jesus said, John 6, 63, the words that I speak, their spirit and their yeah, life. Yes. Why? Because I got the power now. Yes. You know, yes. that's that's how I become an overcomer. Mm -hmm. That's how I mm -hmm. defeat the devil. That's how is greater is he that's in me yes. than he yes. that's in the world. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. All right. So, Amen. yeah, the, it's, it's all about being anointed. anointed. Yeah. I, I, I'm going to say yeah. this and then I'm through. <laughs> I believe right. it's uh, I believe it's Isaiah uh, 11 and 2, but it tells you that the anointing destroys the yoke, mm -hmm. takes it off. Of, if first of all, he said the anointing lifts the burden. Yes. Takes it off of your shoulder. Mm -hmm. And then the burden is destroyed because of the anointing. Yes. The anointing can't stand. The burden can't stand up. Yes. Under the anointing. Under the Amen. Anointing. So Amen. that's that's what the name Messiah means. Mm -hmm. The anointed the one. Anointed one. And yes. his anointings. Yes. Because he came with many yes. anointed. Yes. That's why he began to list them. I believe there's seven of them that he lists that the anointing will bring. But then that's another season, so I won't <laughs> I'll leave that alone. Amen. Okay. <laughs> Oh, amen, Pastor Johnson. That was good. That was good comment. That was good comment. And as you were speaking, I was thinking about what you said, you know, that we don't use the power. You know, Jesus, when he left, he gave us the power to do what he did. You know, the word says that if we lay hands on the sick, they will recover. And and when you do that, you must believe that. You must believe that. That's where the power comes in your faith and believe in that. And I know a lot of times I think about me, you know, when um, I changed positions on my job. Well, actually, they terminated my job. And um, I had been working my other job for a lot of years. I transitioned to different positions in that area, but I worked for the company for 38 years. And they terminated my job. And I was like, wow, you know, it, it threw me off that it happened, number one. Um, but I said, okay, they gave us a severance. They said we could have a severance for five months. And my thing was I wanted to at least work a couple of more years before I retired. So I'm thinking um, – that, okay, I'll just chill, take the severance for five months, and 
I'll after that I'll look for another job. But in the meantime, they told us this three days before my birthday, which was in December, our termination. They didn't terminate us right then and there. They said our termination date would be March 1st. So we had all that time to think about it and do whatever, make plans. And we all in the Flint area received an email from our union rep. And he was telling us about this customer service job. And so I said, well, you know, why not finish my two years here? I know this company, you know, so I applied for it. And I encouraged, they only have one position, but I encouraged this other lady that I work with to go for it too, you know. And so in the process of that, they opened up a second position. So we both got it. Now, I'm in customer service, and you're talking to members. I work in the Medicare area. That's the government area. So you're talking to elderly people, and you're the knowledge for that area. So you have to navigate to different spaces to be able to get information to answer their question. So I'm going through training, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, am I going to be able to get this stuff? Because it was just a lot of information, and I felt overwhelmed. And I had really never been in that position that I had to answer the question right then and there. So everything that I was speaking when I was talking to people, I was speaking against myself. And one Sunday, I woke up, and I told Miss Sister Kitty this. I said, you know, Sister Kitty, I prayed this morning. I asked God to show me what I was doing wrong. And the Holy Spirit said, shut your mouth. <laughs> he said, shut your mouth. And I said, okay, Lord, I knew what that meant. So from then on, I started speaking life to that situation. I always pray in the mornings, but I started specific, specifically speaking to my focus, my mind, you know, being able to navigate, you know, that that the Holy Spirit, who was the revelator, would bring revelation to me regarding certain things, and it turned around, you know? So it's like we do need to exercise our power in believing in the Word of God, and that it is truth. Amen? Amen. Well, I thank you guys this morning. <laughs>